Hello and welcome to the Pop Art Creator plugin for Photoshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and use this plugin. When you download the plugin, you're going to have two files. One of them is the Pop Art Extension .zxp, and the other one is Start Here PDF. In this guide, you're going to see that the first step is to download a plugin installer. You can choose the more simple ZXP installer or the more complex Anastasis plugin manager. The ZXP installer is very simple. All you have to do is drag the plugin over here. You can also do the same thing with Anastasia's extension manager by simply dragging and dropping the plugin, but then you have the option to remove it over here on top as well. Once you have successfully installed the plugin, you'll find it in Window, Extensions, and then Pop Art Creator. To begin, all you have to do is press New Canvas, and a new document will appear. You will see that the Place Image Here layer is already selected, and all you have to do is drag in any image of your choice. At this point, feel free to scale the image as you see fit. At this point, you can already click the Create Pop Art button. However, you can also use these layers above to adjust the image to make it stand out a little bit more. For example, for this image, I'm going to bump up the contrast a bit. Once I'm done with that, I go back to the Pop Art Creator and hit Create Pop Art. Your image should now be two-tone and look as if it was screen printed. And if you zoom in, you're going to see the details. And if you look in the Layers panel, you're going to see the Colors folder, which contains background, hair, clothing, eyeshadow, lipstick, and skin. And if you look a little bit lower, you're going to see your photo folder, which contains a reference image. It also has the half tone and the grungy version of your image. All the filters applied can be individually adjusted. For example, you can make the half tone either bigger or smaller. At this point, you can select any of the colors, select the black box, and you can start painting away. I'm going to undo. However, it is also possible to make a selection of your image. So let's go ahead and click on image, double click on it. And here where it says place your image here, we're going to take the select object tool and just give it a selection. Now it gave us a selection. We're going to create a mask and hit save. We can close this smart object. And now if we press command and click on the image, it'll give us a selection. Great. If we select the color, BG, and you see the box is around the color. We must have the box surrounding this black box over here and press Command I for invert. Then we can press Command D and Command I again. And now we have a background filled in for us. Now there are many ways of doing this. This is just my preferred way. Now I'm going to press B on the keyboard for brush. And you can see here I have colors black and white selected. I'm going to press D to default them to white and black. And if I will press X, you're going to see they start changing. Right. So if we have white color selected, it is going to reveal the color. And if I press X and I have instead the black color selected, it is going to erase it. That is how the coloring system works. So brush, B, D, to default the colors to black and white, and X to change them from coloring in to erasing. Right, here we have this button that says Select Next Layer. We click that, and you can see that we have a selection around our previous color. Now, in hair, we can just go ahead and color in the hair. Now, you can spend as much time as you want coloring this in, but since these kind of works are supposed to be a little bit grunge, it's not that important to get all the details in. After we finish with the hair color, we can go ahead and press Select Next Layer again, and now it is going to give us the choice to color in the clothing. At this point, we can click the reference photo to see where the clothing is, because sometimes it's a little bit difficult to see. So, something like this. I'm going to deselect the reference photo now. Now I can hit Next Layer one more time. It says Eyeshadow. I'm still using the same technique to paint, then press X to erase. Once I'm finished with the eyeshadow, I select Next Layer, and now I'm on the lipstick. Select Next Layer one more time, and now we're in Skin. At this point, you can press Command-I on the keyboard to invert, and you can erase all the parts that you want to remain white. I'm going to select Next Layer one more time, and it's going to deselect everything. And we have a completed pop art creation. And now we're ready to move on to the next part. As you can see here, we have a lot of different color options. And if we click them, you can see that the colors change. There are 15 colors in total. And below that, you're going to see there's three icons, two by two, three by three, and a diptych. Please bear in mind, when running the last diptych action, you're going to be asked to close any other images which you might have open in Photoshop as that might interfere with the process. 
Let's go back to our original image and you can see here that we have created a 3x3 three three grid. Let's unview it and then we have a 2x2 two two grid with 1, 2 and 3 different variations. Let's delete both of these folders. And here we have a current version and an export button. If we press this button, we get to export the current version. We must press the open button and this is going to save the file. If we then select all variations or 15 colors for example and press export and press open you will see that the plugin automatically exports 15 different color variations this is a very powerful feature which can save you a lot of time but now it's your turn to go ahead and start creating don't forget to leave this video a like and if you have any questions comment below